right, uh, now let's go ahead and get to the Tariq Nasheed video, who we just donated and said I skipped it. I didn't. Uh, and by the way, thanks Craig Manier for that one. Who you know, once again, the whole reason why we uh, watched that uh, harassment workplace video for so long is because Craig Manier dropped a forty dollar forty cents for that. Now let's get to Tariq Nasheed. Okay, Tariq Nasheed said it's time for some educational content. A white man like Ghost feening his masculinity is seriously damaging to not only the black population, but also to the world. This will ex- expose Ghost's homosexuality fetish. Well, I don't have any kind of homosexuality fetish. I'll tell you that right damn now. And I have no idea what the hell this is supposed to be. What the hell is this crap? What the hell is this, Tariq Nasheed? Jesus Christ. And, and by the way, Tariq Nasheed dropped 50 bucks for this one so we're gonna have to watch a good portion of it and what the fuck is this buck breaking 2021 full movie is this where all the buck breaking terminology is coming from here the hell is this crap king flex entertainment the fuck is this crap buck when we breaking. talk about buck breaking we have to understand that buck breaking is a show of power. It's a show of dominance. What? So you can't talk about buck breaking without talking about power. The dominant society, they spend a lot of money and resources. There's Tariq Nasheed right there. Agendas to black society because they try to confuse us sexually. And if they can confuse you sexually, as our brother Neely Fuller said, they can confuse you in any other type of way. When we look at the domination of black people by the dominant society, what we are in essence seeing is that this society wants to ensure that we are not able to actually meet out that thing that makes humans exist and that is creating families and procreating no nobody's stopping black folks from doing that unfortunately black folks are easily manipulated by white liberals And as a result, because they have been easily manipulated by white liberals, they have interjected gay and LGBTQ lifestyle with black folks. I mean, I saw this during uh, the D. Ray McKesson Black Lives Matter shit back in 2016. Do y'all remember that? I mean, uh, they were trying to hold signs at these Black Lives Lives Matter rally. Black Lives Matter rallies, Jesus Christ. They tried to hold up street signs that said black uh, or gay is the new black. Gay is the new black. See, psychologically, when we're talking about the sexualizing of our people, primarily from the dominant society of the system of white supremacy, it had to be established in a very impinging way from the mental state, meaning oh everything that God. was good had to have a sexual undertone. Most of the time, it was mostly direct. So you had to enforce a level of dominance sexually in order to destroy the mind and the spirit simultaneously. So it was always everything that Dude, I do. Dude, I I'm mean, going to look, hold on. I mean, look, 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 look. Okay, okay. With all due respect, okay, I cannot, for the life of me, believe that the entire slavery episode in American history was all consuming with bondage, sexualization, whipping, buck breaking, or whatever the fuck they're trying to say here. Because if it was so bad and traumatic, then why the hell did the slaves stay there for so long? I mean, lest we forget that in the biggest slave states like Alabama, Georgia, you know, these big southern slave states, the black slave community was 80 percent of the population and they were physically superior to the white folks because of genetics and slavery etc and they were controlled by 20 percent of the white folks which were frail and less physical etc so where exactly are they going with this is all i'm saying everything i say i'm going to reinforce it sexually everything that i I'm going to manipulate and use on you has to be done sexually in order for you to understand that you are controlled. You are my slave. You are beneath me in every single way, shape, and form. This whole notion that masculinity is somehow toxic and detrimental to society 
is nothing but an attempt to emasculate black males. Oh my God! Take away someone's right to deny sex, your know, sex acts that go beyond norm, then you violated the human being space of that person. It's clearly an agenda. If you have two eyes in your head and you're able to see, you can see that it's an agenda, and it's an agenda to to decrease our population. See, LGBTQ is like a political party, like the Democrats or the Republicans. So if you're black, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a Democrat. You couldn't be an independent or a Republican. It's always been about destroying the black family. You, the, the, the family's the foundation of a people. You can't well, well, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay. People. Who are you blaming for this? You're blaming Whitey for this? I mean, lest we forget, okay? that we had this phenomena of gangster rap come into the black culture, which has redefined what black culture is. I mean, prior to the Chronic album, which was, I think, introduced to the public back in 91, 92, prior to the Chronic album, we didn't see gangster rap or the gangster culture dominate black communities. We didn't see the gangster rap culture correlated with black folks. They did it themselves. All right, I mean, this is why I don't understand these black people that are being interviewed here, why they aren't venting their frustration at Dr. Dre, who made a billion dollars kind of putting in and suggesting this degeneracy that these folks are talking about. Anyway, I'm sorry for pausing to go ahead. If they're unified, you need division. You need all sorts of pathological behavior and conduct. See, they're first order beings on this planet. People like us, we're first orders. Why? Because we don't need anybody else's energies except our own. But now, now look, this is another thing I disagree you. with you. Hold on, go pa pause this, put it back. All right, put it back. Because this this, this shit right Why? here, I, I just can't get enough of. Energies. Look, this man is trying to talk and speak as if he's black. Okay, I mean, let me tell you something. Black folks, you've got to excommunicate these fucking people out of your community. Because these are the folks that are agitating the situation that you're talking about here. All right? It's always mixed breeds that are the ones that are the most vocal when it comes to race hustling. They're always the most vocal when it comes to division amongst races. I'm not joking around. I've had enough of this. I mean, when I saw the George Floyd riots of 2020 in the summer of 2020, most of the folks that were out there with their bullhorns and that were out there yelling and screaming that there should be some kind of violence, etc., were all mixed breeds. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about mixed breed people. I mean, people are people. But you've got to look at something with a jaundiced eye when something that looks nothing like the people that they are trying to agitate is agitating the situation. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. I, I, this man is not black. And black folks, you need to redefine what black is. You think this fucking guy has the, the experience of the black experience like somebody that is very dark pigmented? Absolutely not. So this guy and whatever the hell he has to say about the black community should be null and void. But no, the black community embraces these fucking mixed breeds. So you doing it to yourselves at this point, baby. Sorry, I, I don't the mean to be fucking to sounding a little bit insensitive, but that's the goddamn the truth. The heterosexual black male is last on the pecking order here in America. If you're just a, a heterosexual black man, how are you gonna beat the case? Because when you show up to court, when you show up to the job interview, when you show up to wherever, you coming in here as a heterosexual black man, you have no power. When Mark Twain confessed that we, white people, ground the manhood out of the Negro, why ground the manhood out of the Negro? Because it's the- Another one! Masculinity. Another mixed breed, I mean, come on! You can't keep doing this, black folk. All right? This is why you're perpetually in a very precarious situation because you've got mixed breeds talking for the whole community. That most exposes the fraud of white masculinity. We, as the progenitors of culture, the ones who are the fathers and mothers oh of civilization, taught all people, 
who people look to for social cues, whether they want to realize it or not, I think they feel if they can get us to adapt to it, they can get everybody to adapt to it. If anybody should have a problem with European males, it should be the European female. Because everything the European male has ever learned to do to us, he first practiced on his own woman. Oh, we need Jesus resources Christ. in education, we need resources in labor, we need resources in politics. I mean, what are, we need what, are they, what are these people talking about, dude? What are these fucking people talking about? Do these people have any idea what the South was even during slavery? I mean, what, do they think that Master, all right, when he was in the bed with his white wife, what, he was tying her up and beating her and shit? That's absolutely not what happened. As a matter of fact, I mean, you see it depicted in all kinds of movies from the South that Southern men actually were gentlemen and they courted their women and they were romantic, etc. I don't know what the fuck this, these people are talking about. This isn't medical. We need resources and so many things, but they ignore that and they put millions and even billions of dollars to tell us that you need to really embrace your LBGT side. So these people have an agenda and it's up to us to understand what the agenda is. I don't understand. I, look, I want to be honest with you. Uh, you guys invented the download brother stuff. I, I don't understand. W what are they trying to say? They're trying to say that uh, the reason all fucking black folks are now turning bisexual or gay is because of white men or some shit. I mean, that's fucking ridiculous. I mean, do y'all remember the download brother shit, man? That was that had nothing to do with white folks. As a matter of fact, that was a black culturist movement. All right. Black men giving each other social cues, uh, down low social cues so that they can bang each other and suck each other's cocks and shit. That had nothing to do with whitey. You know, that has nothing to do with whitey. I'm just saying, man. Of course, they show white snow for some fucking reason. I have no idea what the hell that's about. In order for us to fully grasp the concept of buck breaking, and the historic sexual exploitation of black people under the global system of white supremacy, we first have to go the back global, into the history on, of Europe. The global system of white supremacy? What are you fucking talking about? You know who invented slavery? The fucking Arabs invented slavery, all right? Slavery goes back to the Egyptians, for fuck's sake. I mean, who was in charge of the first trade of actual slaves? It was fucking Arabs, dude. I mean, I, I'm sick and tired of this rewriting of history, all right? I mean, the Arabs were the biggest slave traders on the planet, and that's why they were able to trade human beings for other goods. Right. Jesus we Christ. We have to understand what created this ideology in the mindset of the white supremacists. This is fucking ridiculous. The European culture have no history of a civilizing educational process called culture before they meet us. So you're dealing with someone that's moving from the level of the animal, responding only to instincts and desires. And whatever it takes to fulfill that, raping, murdering, plundering, pillaging, oh has been the history of Europe. They created a perverted way of looking at nature. And so it becomes important that when we look at them, it's, it's not just what they do, it's the perversion of what they do. In an ice age, you're going to create a certain mentality. When you are in a sun age, you're going to create a certain mentality. So what is very natural becomes unnatural in the ice. However, when you come back to the natural, you bring your unnatural with you. The European sexual culture operate at the level of animal, responding to oh physical urine and physical stimulation. The sacredness and the value that the African placed on giving birth was just the complete opposite in Europe. And so that's why you find so many occasions oh, of Europeans Christ. involving themselves with the animals they were raising. I mean, they've passed laws in Scandinavian countries even today that said having sex with sheep is appropriate. Uh, look, with, with all due respect, this is not a European exclusive problem. I mean, they do it within the Arab communities. They fuck goats. If I'm not mistaken, they do it within certain African cultures. Dude, what are these fucking people talking about, man? God's devoted to, like, Pan, 
Pan, which is a freak, like a satyr, which means like an animal that did people and animals. Or Ganymede, the god that was bisexual. If he showed up, you had to like give him some. It was good. If you didn't, you got in trouble. I mean, you have, <laughs> you have people have a pantheon where you have gods that are freaks. <laughs> that come and screw people. Some of them are almost animal-like. You've got Bacchus. If you look at, I mean, I, I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of Bacchus, but there's, I've seen a picture of Bacchus where he's a dude carrying this big thing of wine with uh, hummingbirds or something with strings holding his penis up. A big, long penis, a big thing of booze. If that's your God, okay? I mean, all bets off the table that it stops there, right? When the Aryans, the Indo-Aryans, ran up into Black India, not only did they savage the place, not only did they brag Black and boast India? in their sacred literature Black about India, the Black gods, flaying the Black skin of the gods, but they bragged about sodomizing the Black gods. As a matter of fact, as a part of their culture, you have agreements. This is how it was. If you had a boy that you were, you know, having sexual relations with, 12, 13, 14, 15, you'd have to do a number of things. One, you'd have to promise him protection. Two, you'd have to promise that you would educate him. Oh my God. Three, you'd have to make sure that you would always provide for him, whatever that may be. There were actual terms and agreements when it came to you having sexual relations with a little boy back in ancient Greek and Rome. Yeah, I, I was just Professor about to Dan say, Dan. you know, you're talking about Greeks and shit, dude. I mean, you went from Europeans, which, you know, I'm assuming you mean Anglo-Saxon European, and you're bringing up Greeks, you're bringing up shit Arabs do, uh, you're the fucking black Indians. I've never heard of such a shit. For, for example, in her book, Not Gay, documents that a critical element of white male masculinity is the ability to have gay sex as a straight white man. Oh she my said that's God, a critical dude. element of white male masculinity. Get the so fuck the out of here of with this stupid warp bunch of shit. The ability to sodomize, to have. A human being is only as great or as worse as his or her environment. In an ice age, where you are dealing with these temperatures, your babies are freezing in your arms to death. No mercy. And so they have this mentality of just a viciousness because they are reflecting their environment. Oh and so when the God. ice ages began to melt, give or take about maybe 5,000, 7,000 years okay, ago. Okay, okay. They came back. So you're saying that Europeans that unfortunately settled in very uh environmentally excruciating areas that you know weren't conducive for you know things like domesticating uh crops animals etc you mean to tell me that they had enough time worried about survival that they had enough time thinking about, hey, man, you know what? I want some kinky-ass fucking bisexual sex. I want to beat my woman's ass. I mean, what? who the fuck? What kind of warped history am I fucking listening to here? Across the mountains. And when they came back across the mountains, they brought that mentality with them. When you're in the ice, you're not really thinking about healthy relationships. And quite frankly, when the urge hits you, any hole will do. Heterosexual sex oh my God. for the white man. Look, the only if, if that. that's the case, then how the hell did the Europeans that you're claiming are so decadent and homosexual, how the hell did they fucking spread? How the hell did they give birth? I mean, they, these are very abstract concepts that these people are not going into the historical context. I mean, why don't you give me some actual examples of history? Seriously, why don't you give me like an example of something? You're just giving me dumbass artwork and having these brothers who have who have asked absolutely not quoted anything, who have not quoted any kind of reading material, not quoted anybody from history. They're just talking a bunch of shit. And with all due respect to some of these brothers, they look like they're a little homosexual themselves, in my opinion. I'm just saying. That is procreation. In fact, Hetero sex with a woman was a necessary evil to white folks. For pleasure, homosexual sex 
is preferred. Oh, Jesus Christ, you morons. Look, let's be honest, all right? Homosexual sexuality is the sign of a decadent society about to fall. I mean, that's what happened in Rome. That's what happened in Greece. It's just that they created a society that was so comfortable that idle hands make you, you know, what do they say? Idle hands are the devil's playground. Idle hands makes you think like, hey, uh, you know, I liked, uh, you know, having my penis ejaculated by a third party and, uh, you know, maybe uh, I can be a little bit risque and have uh, somebody within the same sex do it too and uh, ventured out and first began to interact with black society, there was a notable contrast of sexual behavior between these two cultures. Typically when people talk about brook breaking, they start on the plantation and they begin oh with God. the sexual abuse that our ancestors suffered on the plantation. But that sexual this is abuse a bunch of started shit. in West Africa when the Portuguese first encountered the West African men and women. When we see all of the statues of naked Greeks and Romans with their extremely small penises, oh, I think that we have oh, to recognize- Oh, 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 why do you have to even bring that up as a concept, brother? Huh, is it, is it a little bit, uh, I, I don't know, you're a little disappointed or something that the, the white penises are bigger or some shit? I mean, look at this guy. He's already using penis size as a means of, I don't know, justifying his side as being better, you know? Yeah, you see him with extremely small penises, and, uh, you know, me as a black man, I inc I really am endowed because I am a black man. I love seeing other endowed black men. I mean, dude, why is that even in this conversation? Dude, this is the worst documentary I've ever seen in my fucking life. You know, and look, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not like I have any, uh, like I don't have compassion for, you know, the potential black plight. But these are the wrong representatives to try to give any kind of legitimacy into the black plight. This is taking it in a direction that I think is, it's disturbing and ridiculous. All right, I'm not even kidding. In some ways they are trying to emulate the African comfort with our bodies, but because this is not something that is native to their cultural norm, it begins to be uh, misshapen. What man from what ethnic group can stand up against a black man toe to toe? Okay, man. all right, all right. I'll, I'll go with you on that. Yeah, what man could stand with a black man toe to toe? I agree with you. You guys are physically superior. But if that's the case, then how in the hell did 20% of frail white men dominate an 80% population of black slaves? I mean, it makes no fucking sense. I mean, like I said, you take a look at the South. At the time, uh, Georgia, Alabama, all the southern states, they literally had more blacks in those populations than whites. And 20% of a white population dominated an 80% black population. So this idea that, oh, well, Whitey was beating fucking black people's asses and raping them and sexually fucking raping and assaulting them and all this shit, you don't think that at some point that everyone that was observing this or actually uh, taking the brunt end of the abuse of this you didn't think that at some point after, I don't know, some I, some people say 350 years, some people say 400 years, 400 years of slavery, they just allowed this to happen? I mean, isn't there some level of responsibility of the fact that black folks allowed this to happen for four fucking centuries? I mean, I, I, you can't have it both ways, folks. All right, you can't have it both ways. Nobody especially the European who is at the bottom of the total pole when it comes to genetic stability. All the way back in Rome, in Greece, some of the rulers were transgenders. They would travel at night dressed as women to go hang out at brothels and go <laughs> mingle with the people as a woman. This is the king of the whole nation. And he hanging yeah. out here looking like Betsy. You, yeah, you're, you're, you're quoting one fucking uh, emperor and that's Caligula. 
And yet you can't even, you don't even know which Roman king it was or which Roman emperor. You're calling him king. They didn't have kings back then. They had emperors and shit and fucking, you know, uh, dictators and shit like that. Uh, you didn't even name it, brother. You didn't even name. I mean, if you're going to make these accusations, name a fucking leader of Rome that it was. And it was Caligula. And by the way, take a look at how long Caligula's reign was. It was less than five years because they had enough of his shit and, uh, you know, put him away. All right. In an article many years ago about Romans in the Colosseum used to get giraffes to have sex with the old horse and the giraffes had such large genitalia, you know, women would bleed to death and the audiences loved it. When white Arabs Which artist? Over You're of- just saying, yeah, the white artists, they loved it, baby. They they uh, brought on the, the giraffes. They thought the giraffes were well, in, well endowed. And I mean, I have yet to hear any quotation of some person in history. I have yet to hear any quotation from a history book. I mean, this is fucking pathetic. Black society, there was an immediate attack on black male sexuality and an early form of buck breaking, the castration of black males and turning them into eunuchs began to happen on a regular basis. When? They said the eunuch. When? What time period are you talking about? In what history book? In what quotation of somebody in history? Where in the fuck are you people finding this information? You're just saying it. And just because you say it, it doesn't mean that it's factual. Give me some evidence. Give me something. Give me some book that some black person wrote back at least fucking 500 years ago who uh, fucking accumulated all this information or some shit. I mean, give me a break. This would be sometimes so close to the king that they would have, get so much information. What king? Dude, what king are you talking about? What are you talking about, for fuck's sake? Them so that they couldn't start their own dynasties, okay? They couldn't go out and now impregnate somebody with this knowledge, this king knowledge. They would castrate them by cutting off their testicles. Who? And their completely. Who in the fuck would castrate who? I mean, you notice that this is all abstract language. They're not even explaining to you who the fuck they're talking about. Who? Who castrated black people? Us of population control and to them not wanting them to procreate. This goes all the way back then and they did not want any spread of them because they didn't consider them to be human beings. So at that time, the castrating and the creation of- Who, you fucking dumb shit, who? you to be around us, but we have to make sure that you can't dominate us, that you have no power drive, that you have no interest whatsoever in our women because you're going to destroy our numbers and you're going to increase in yours and you're going to spread and we don't want that to happen. So they wouldn't mind having little black boys or black men around them as long as they could not actually be considered men and do anything oh that would be of interest God. to the women. I mean, had. this is all well, abstract the bullshit. Greeks, you know, the most feared fighters were the gay ones. And what, what would they do? They would tie two guys together at the ankle. If you've ever, ever heard the expression, to tie joined at the ankle. Who would? That's because they get two what guys civilization? Like Who? Together. They they die for each other. Put them up. They fight anybody. You can go touch my man. I'll kill you. Don't look at my man. Yeah. Well, why would uh, dude, this is really starting to piss me off. In Africa, when you've got the Catholic Church, which is is, is a is a gay institution, a continuation of okay. the Greco-Roman. Now they're claiming that it's the Catholic Church. This is the first quote of who I have heard. Is Now they're saying it's the Catholic Church, a gay organization of Greco-Roman descent. Okay, at least somebody named somebody, all right? Alia and, and homosexuality in Africa dominating these people for two or three hundred years. It is the case that there is evidence of homosexuality prior to the colonialism of the 19th century. But that pre-colonial homosexuality was brought by white Muslims. Instead, while it's pre-European. Now, now it was brought by white Muslims. You notice how they're not even entertaining the Arabs who were the creators of Islam. And by the way, Islam is not that fucking old of a religion. All right. But notice how he's saying it. the homosexuality was brought by white Muslims. He won't even say that it was the Arabs because you see, 
if they admit that the Arabs did anything or had anything to do with this, then people would fucking look it up and they'd be doing research and they'll realize that it was the Arabs that were the ones that were the biggest slave traders at the time. Because guess what? Who is in the Middle East? It's Arabs, right? And where does the Middle East extend to? It extends into North Africa. That's where, uh, you know, Libya is. That's, you know, around the area of uh, Egypt, etc. So this is who had close proximity to Africa before Whitey, all right? And notice how this son of a bitch doesn't even want to go in the direction of Arabs. He said, no, man, it was white Muslims. What fucking white Muslims are you talking about? Are you talking about the ones near Russia and the Caucasus and shit in in fucking Chechnya and Georgia? I mean, what fucking white Muslims are you talking about, brother? It's still foreign and white. It was the Turks who brought in the Mamluks when the Mamluks, the slave soldiers of Islamic civilization, who were Turks. When they ruled Egypt, they brought homosexuality. Okay, to so I now they- they're claiming Turkey. Okay, you know, so they didn't they didn't say Libya, they didn't blame Egypt. No, now it's Turkey. Turkey, and they're claiming that Turks are white. I don't know, that's news to me. Uh, but they're the ones that brought homosexuality. And here's this one homosexual looking son of a bitch who has some kind of thing to say here it's really interesting that right in the center of saint peter's square when the pope opens the shades to his window he looks out at the structure that is often called the obelisk today we should know that the obelisk is the symbol of yeah. the SARS erect yeah. penis. I was, I was just about to say, uh, yeah, it is. Obelisk is a representative of the penis. But guess what? That's Egyptian, brother. And I noticed that many of you so-called black intellectuals that are being interviewed for this dumb fucking documentary, you brothers are wearing a lot of Egyptian symbolism So, uh, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to finally admit that, yeah, man, the brothers, we was kings and shit. We was proud of our big-ass dicks, baby. And we decided to praise our big-ass dicks when it comes to the obelisk. I I don't understand. What proof were you trying to prove with, by mentioning the obelisk? I have no idea. That comes from Egypt, asshole. So that while they're removing penises, the Pope looks out at a large black penis every morning when he opens his shades the irony cannot be lost Uh oh that's right okay now now it's a black penis because we was kings i get it all right i get it now i get it by the time the plantation systems were created in the americas the white supremacists learned how to master more strategic and insidious ways on how to buck break black men and by extension okay they learn how to all right notice how they transition no pun intended from i guess asking these professors and black mouthpieces about the so-called history of buck breaking and notice they did nothing they said absolutely nothing And now we're in American slavery time. So we had 15 minutes and 30 seconds of absolute bullshit. And now they're going to bring in America, slavery, and all this other crap. The spirit of black families. Because in the patriarchal context, uh, oh, the patriarchy. The and so if you break the male, then you break the woman and you break the children. Oh, so when I think of buck breaking, I don't solely think about just the male per se. And then we have to understand that it also wasn't just sex either. You know, when you're breaking somebody, you can break them spiritually, you know, do different things. It doesn't have to be just sodomy. And so a lot of us, when we focus on buck breaking, oh, we Jesus think about Christ. the African man or the African captive being taken out, you know, on the plantation, being brought in front of, you know, uh, the wait a minute. children. They're showing us anime as an example. They're showing us erotic slavery anime as an example. I mean, dude, this fucking documentary has lost all its and credibility, man. in front of everybody. But another part of buck breaking is not being able to protect your children, being able to protect your women, not being able to provide for them. That's also breaking 
the man uh, mentally. This is absolutely false. As a matter of fact, uh, f- the black families were more intact during slavery than they have been ever since. And Thomas Sowell, the great right-wing economist, has said this and has even got the records to prove it, okay? So this idea that man, man, you know, the... Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. What pisses me off is that you've got black people feeding naive, gullible idiots this information that miraculously, for whatever reason, the whites were bagging blacks from Africa just so they could specifically take him over here to America to beat him indefinitely and have sexual perverted sex with him and take away their children. I mean, that isn't conducive to a good worker, bitch. And that's what slavery was. Slavery was work in exchange for a roof over your head, food on the table, and clothing on your back. Nothing more. That's the definition of slavery. Okay, that's the definition of slavery. The the ability to exchange your work for roof over your head, clothes on your back, and food on the table. That's it. Nothing else. So this idea that, oh, they, they bag black people just so they can bring them to America and whip them to death and, you know, have all these sick, sadistic sexual perversions and shit, that is absolutely not true because... All the black folks that are on slavery have to do is just say, I ain't working, motherfucker. Fuck you. I, I mean, I, I eat, I, I'm hungry. I, I ain't eat. And if I ain't going to eat, I ain't going to work. Uh, you take away my family. Fuck you. I ain't working. And that's all the black slaves have to do. They just universally had to say, man, I ain't working. Jesus fucking Christ. And spiritually. On plantations like this, We know that a lot of the black women who were enslaved here were exploited sexually, and we know this because of the offspring and the children they had. The children were mulatto octoroon, so that was the evidence of the sexual exploitation. But one thing that is not talked about is the sexual exploitation that happened to the black men on these plantations. The whole European expansion, that was a homosexual enterprise. Oh my Victorian God! Expansion, British expansion. Most of those colonels were homosexuals. In fact, in a very important book, Homosexuality and Colonization, it's documented that European colonies were all seen as homosexual playground. Oh the my whole God! Breaking process. Then if that was the case, okay, look, let's just say for the sake of argument, they're telling the truth, okay? And let's just say that, yeah, all the colonies of the original 13 American colonies were all a bunch of homos. Then how the fuck did they procreate? How the fuck did they have children and the lineage of those people still live on to this day? I mean, Jesus Christ, what a fucking bunch of crap. ...of the male slave and... So they would take probably the strongest, most. Oh my God! Look, this is anime. Resistant. This isn't some historical picture. This is fucking anime shit. Of the enslaved to make an example of him in front of everyone else, and part of making that example of him uh, was to go through a process of complete and total humiliation, which included public flogging, which included. Uh, actual race. This is fucking anime. Mean, this isn't even tie real. Our hands down, spread our hands, spread our legs, and they would physically rape us. Slave masters oh would my rape God. black men in front of his entire family. Sometimes I the mean, whole plantation. If let's just say for the sake of argument that this is true, okay? Let's just say, all right? Then why the hell did the slaves just stand there and allow this to happen? I mean, it's not as if all these people were all chained up. I mean, that's not how it works, okay? These people lived in their own quarters. They had their own food. They had their own families. I mean, if this was legitimately the case, then why didn't all the slaves say, man, this ain't right, man. Motherfucking master raping me up my ass, man. You know what I'm saying? And they all just said, we ain't working. I mean, that's literally all they have to say. And what is master going to do? He's going to whip them all? It ain't going to happen. All right, it ain't going to happen. So give me a fucking break, man. I don't believe a word of this shit. All right, and look, I ain't racist. 
Okay, I, I actually understand the black plight and the situation of racism in America and shit like that. But this is a bunch of shit, dude. This is the absolutely a bunch man, of the shit. The stronger the black man, the more they would rape him, the more they would buck him. Just to make uh, look, sure. They didn't even have to fight back. Look at how many black folks in this picture, if we're going to take this picture verbatim. Look at all these black folks with one idiot with a bullwhip. You mean to tell me that these physically superior slaves couldn't just be like, man, I, we ain't taking this, man. This is wrong, baby. This, you know, are you fucking kidding me? I, I mean, like I said, in the biggest slave states in America, uh, 80% of the population was slaves. 20% of the population was whitey. So much like Kanye West said, that sounds like a choice to me, baby. None of That sounds like a choice to, to me. Anything to fight back. There's a lot of evidence of the white slave owners who were practicing sodomy against the black males. You had people like Thomas Thistlewood in Jamaica who talked about some of the black men who were sodomized out there. It comes with an admission on both sides. You know, the black man didn't want it in doesn't really want to admit that he was in such a weakened state. Oh, get was the able fuck out of here, be. dude. We've had down low brothers, man. I mean, why don't y'all talk about that shit? What, Whitey fucking forced the down low brothers shit to happen? Get the fuck out of here with this crap. Good God, this is pissing me off. You know. And by the way, I'm gonna let this go for about 21 minutes, and then we're moving on because Tariq Nishi dropped about 55 bucks or some shit. Buck broken by um, the slave master. During antebellum slavery, around that time, homosexuality was still illegal but you had a lot of white men who would practice it, especially on the enslaved people that they had on their plantations. And they would also have relations with each other that was very covert and a lot of people didn't know about it. There was one white slave owner, James Hammond. Um, he had diaries that are infamous and there's a book about his diaries and his life where he sent a letter to another slave owner, um, Thomas Withers, and they were having a gay relationship with each other. And Hammond was a known pedophile at the time. He molested some of his own nieces. So we know some of the things that he was doing to the black people, especially the black uh, men. Yeah, no, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 no. Did you see that manipulation by Tariq Nasheed here? Now, he was talking about a relationship between two white men. One of those white men that had uh, a relations was obviously some sick fucking pervert that molested his nieces or whatever. And then indirectly tries to bring that into, now we know what they did to their slaves and shit like that. And he tries to use that as proof. Come on, Tariq Nasheed. That's fucking stupid, dude. Come on, man. It was continually a process of making sure that there was no energy to do anything against me. You're not going to want to fight me. Why? Because I just destroyed your champion. I just destroyed your man. I just destroyed your father, your brother, your uncle, your grandfather. Bruh, I just destroyed him. Slavery, excuse me. Slavery was an economic situation. Okay, these brothers in this fucking documentary are trying to claim that it was some sexual perversion. The whole reason why slaves were brought to America was to do labor. And you see, it would not behoove a slave owner to beat their slaves into submission, to deprive them of any kind of living situation, like uh, keep them away from the elements so that they don't get sick, keep them fed so that they can work in the fields all day. I mean, this shit makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And it's sad that this version of history is actually being believed by some gullible naive fucks because you are consciously and culturally imbued with the idea that the man is the protector and the provider so if i destroy your protector and your provider you will become my slave by default the white lgbt community they've always had an anti-black sector of their society that has always negatively targeted black people oh give me or a break uh look oh, let's be honest and by the way this was a uh I think a governor of New York, by the way. So this is real. This is one case out of many, all right, who, you know, the governor of New York at one point happened to be a, you know, Lee queer eye for straight guy type of a transgendered, okay? But they're using these isolated incidents uh, to define some weird objective that the whole reason why the colonists came here was because of sexuality in relation to homosexuality. 
I mean, did we not forget that the whole first settlers that came to this country, especially in the North American continent, were fucking religious fanatics? Were the Quakers... They were the fucking Puritans and shit because they wanted to get away from all the Reformation and all that bullshit that was happening in Europe and they just wanted to live their own lives as pious religious people. I mean, Jesus fucking Back Christ. Back into antebellum slavery. Cornbury was one of the first governors of the province of New York and New Jersey. He was a transgender. This was a person who dressed like a woman. And also this was the person who helped expand slavery in the United States against black people. Oh, God. The process of thinking. Oh, good fucking God, dude. I can't stand this shit anymore. I mean, how in the hell did pre-antebellum, all right, which is pre-slavery, or, or excuse me, a, a pre-post-slavery, how the hell in antebellum times did a, a New York governor help with facilitating slavery in the South? I mean, I mean, did we not forget that the North wasn't a big fan of slavery? I mean, for fuck's sake, man, where the hell is Tariq Nasheed and all these people Benign getting this the false the information, man? Was to sodomize the male. Oh, my God. Because the white man has this sick paradigm that the only homosexual is the one who's being sodomized. But the sodomizer retains his masculinity. All right, I, I'm done with this. I'm like done with this shit, dude. Receiver that it's not gay or some shit like oh that. Oh my but god! Listen, you're dick. Why didn't you just bite his dick off? Man, if if you're forced, you uh, fellatio. Get, even if you're just thinking about it, you don't even have to do the act. Like if you think about it, and you get that little twinge. Oh, you gay, motherfucker! Like. Make no mistake about it. All right, we're, we're done with this. Farms. I, I'm done. All right, I'm done with this shit. I can't take any more of this. All right, I think I played uh, my obligation to this shit. Good God.